Is Cain being a child of the devil biblical? I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this information, but I thought I would make a really quick video talking about a few points since um, so many people are still not understanding my perspective on this particular issue. One of my listeners made this comment on one of my videos. She says, Listening to Rob Skiba and Jaronism discuss your view of Cain, they say you have to use various non-canonical books to support it. That is not true, though. The Targum, for example, only confirms it. All they cite is Genesis 4 and quickly move on, ignoring Genesis 3, verse 15, as if it just did not happen. Ignoring that every other male in Genesis is either the son of, the father of, or he begat. Only Cain goes on to have his genealogy cited, but Adam is not his father. There are two seeds. One plus one equals two. Working in a lab, I give paternity tests all the time. And this means a woman is not sure who her kids belong to. Could there be two different guys, maybe even three? My response. Thank you for your comment. I will make a quick video on this, as I've stated numerous times in my books, videos, and shows that the only reason I cite other non-canonical texts in covering this issue is to shed light on and share further extra detail upon the foundational biblical teachings, but that it is not necessary to do so in reaching such conclusion as many have been led to this revelation without the extra narrative. However, when one does look to other source for reference, there are numerous that can and do help explain the conundrum of whether Cain was a child of the devil and what the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil symbolizes. For example, as you mentioned, the Targums, they do indeed elaborate upon many passages which do clarify this as such possibility, such as scriptural references found in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, as you cited previously, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, and Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, which, when studied and understood, in my opinion, absolutely confirmed the testimony of John, Paul, and Yeshua on this matter, which is why I even source the other information as I have. I have also asserted previously that as an investigator of truth, I am prone to examine every piece of evidence that I can find before determining whether this is indeed truth. Thus, in similar regard, I have examined all that I could find in connection from myriad sources in order to help me come to conclusion on this matter. All right, three references from the Targum really quick. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 says this in the King James. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. In the Targum it says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between the seed of thy son and the seed of her sons. And it shall be when the sons of the woman keep the commandments of the law, they will be prepared to smite thee upon thy head. But when they forsake the commandments of the law, thou wilt be ready to wound them in their heel. And so the extra detail asserts that the enmity between the seed lines does connect to the children of both the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, and that they are literal, physical blood lineages, which is why it says, between the seed of thy son and the seed of her son's which again is not found in the King James Version, which is why I like to study the Targums and some of these extra canonical texts in order to get 
further detail on this as possibility. Let's continue. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. In the King James, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. In the Targums it says, And Adam knew Hava his wife, who had desired the angel, semicolon. And she conceived and bare Cain, semicolon. And she said, I have acquired a man, the angel of the Lord. And she added to bear from her husband, Adam, his twin, even Abel. And so, in this particular reference, it cites that Eve, Hava, having desired the angel, is what led to her conception and bearing Cain. And that after she conceived Cain, she added to bear from her husband, Adam, his twin, even Abel. And so the distinction, which when you understand it this way, you it makes sense why this particular scripture is found at the beginning of Genesis chapter 4, which as chapter lists and details the lineage of Cain. And it's in Genesis chapter 5 that you have the children of Adam, the lineage and genealogy of Adam cited, which again, in, in the Targums, you get great clarity on this. Genesis chapter 5 from the King James. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him, male and female created he them, and blessed them and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness, after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were eight hundred years, and he begat sons and daughters, and all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and thirty years, and he died. Now, even in this particular, in the King James Version, it speaks of Seth as being begat in his own likeness and after his own image. Well, in the Targums, you get even greater clarity and more elaboration on that particular point. In the Targum, it says, This is the book of the genealogy of man. In the day that the Lord created man, in the likeness of the Lord he made him, male and female he created them, and blessed them in the name of his word. And he called their name man in the day they were created. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat Sheth, who had the likeness of his image and of his similitude. For before had Hava born Cain, who was not like to him, and Abel was killed by his hand. And Cain was cast out. Neither is his seed genealized in the book of the genealogy of Adam. But afterwards there was born one like him, and he called his name Sheth. And the days of Adam after he begat Sheth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. And so the Targums specify the distinction and the differentiation between the children of Adam and the children of Cain, and why it is that Cain's lineage is found in Genesis chapter 4, and Adam's is found in Genesis chapter 5. Now, I, I know I've covered this many, many times and done many, many shows on this, and it really it gets tedious repeating this over and over, but because people still don't get it, I have to do so. And even though it is unnecessary, as I said, to cite this other material to come to this understanding, 
For many, it is necessary because they are not able to grasp the canonical teachings which expound upon such knowledge and this as revelation. And I'll cite just a few examples. Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And yes, the serpent beguiled Eve, but as referenced here by Paul, the serpent beguiling Eve is what led her to not be a chaste virgin. And which again, when Adam ate of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he repeated the act with Eve, and that that is what resulted in her being pregnant with Abel. The scientific name for this is heteropaternal superfecundation. And it just means that twins, fraternal twins, being born of different fathers, which does occur. And in this case, her eating of the fruit with and being beguiled by the serpent, the Nakash, Satan, the devil, which is referenced in Matthew chapter 13 as being the enemy that snuck into the garden. It was, that's what resulted in her being impregnated with Cain. And then her repeating the act and sharing and eating this fruit with Adam is what led to the birth of Abel, which is why Paul says in this particular passage that, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And so he's referencing also what happened in the garden. John also references this, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. And so Yeshua, in Matthew chapter 13, he references this particular passage, and he clarifies that the enemy that snuck into the garden was the wicked one, and that the wicked one is the devil which sowed the tares. So we'll go to that next. The parable of the sower specifying an enemy had sown the tares. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, when the children were born, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn. Burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And so he tells you, an enemy had snuck into the garden, and this enemy was responsible 
for sowing the tares. And that when the blade was sprung up, the children being born, then the tares appeared with the wheat also. And so he says, an enemy hath done this. And because he says, let both grow together until the time of the end, you understand that this passage is also referencing that the seed of Cain would have continuance and that there will be a remnant that would survive the flood and would continue until the time of the end. And that with Yeshua's second coming, the wheat would be gathered for preservation and the tares for condemnation, gathered for condemnation. And that this would occur when he takes his judgment seat. Now, finally, in the first portion of Matthew chapter 13, he speaks in parable and he says, For it is given to you to know and to understand, but to them it is not given. Which I'll elaborate on this even further, but uh, before I do so, I want to get to um, the parable of the wheat and the tares. When he sends the multitudes away, and the apostles come to him and ask him directly to explain to them the parable of the wheat and the tares, for they know it not. And so he says, After sending the multitudes away, Christ clarifies who the enemy is. Then Jesus sent the multitude away, went into the house, and his disciples came, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. There's that reference to John chapter 8, meaning the tares, the enemy which snuck into the garden, is the wicked one which sowed the tares. And then he clarifies even further. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. So there you go. The wicked one, which Cain was of the wicked one, and the enemy which snuck into the garden and sowed the tares, which is the wicked one, is the devil. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. So there in the parable of the sower, when he says, let both grow up until the time of the end, he's telling you that the end is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And so, again, the tares, like Cain, are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The wheat, the sons of Adam, listed in Genesis chapter 5. And the tares, the children of Cain, listed in Genesis chapter 4, would be allowed to grow together until the time of the end, meaning that a remnant of them would continue to exist until the harvest and the end which ensues with Yeshua's second coming that this also implies and asserts that a portion of the line of Cain would survive and have continuance through the flood and be found in the world even today and share further extra detail upon the foundational biblical teachings but that it is not necessary to do so in reaching such conclusion, as many have been led to this revelation without the extra narrative.
However, when one does look to other source for reference, there are numerous that can and do this did not happen. Ignoring that every other male in Genesis is either the son of, the father of, or he begat, only Cain goes on to have his genealogy cited, but Adam is not his father. There are two seeds, one plus one equals two. Working in a lab, I give paternity tests all the time. And this means, a w she says, listening to Rob Skiba and Jaronism discuss your view of Cain, they say you have to use various non-canonical books to support it. That is not true, though. The Targum, for example, only confirms it. All they cite is Genesis 4 and quickly move on, ignoring Genesis 3, verse 15, as if it just... Is Cain being a child of the devil biblical? I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this information, but I thought I would make a really quick video talking about a few points since um, so many people are still not understanding my perspective on this particular issue. One of my listeners made this comment on one of my videos. A woman is not sure who her kids belong to. Could there be two different guys, maybe even three? My response. Thank you for your comment. I will make a quick video on this, as I've stated numerous times in my books, videos, and shows, that the only reason I cite other non-canonical texts in covering this issue is to shed light on 